Today, we're going to go ahead and assemble this. Uh, I bought this a couple weeks ago and I'm just getting around to assembling it. It is my model GO654 6 inch joiner from Grizzly. Um, not a bad, it's the smallest, biggest Grizzly I could get without being a bench top. Does that make any sense? Uh huh. Probably not, it didn't make any sense to me. But um, it is the smallest base unit at Grizzly. My shop isn't big. Um, I went there intentionally wanting to get uh, the model up from this. Um, but when I got there, it was really bigger than I think my shop would allow. And um, I think people tend to go big, but then you run into other problems. You're stumbling over stuff in your shop. So I decided, well, I was going to go with a little smaller model. And it was hard for me to really judge that. I could have got out the measurements and, you know, ran some, you know, size comparisons or something. But when I got there and you, and you see it, because I'm used to looking at it at a catalog and it really doesn't have any reference to its size um, as far as, you know, looking at the pictures. Um, so I went with the smaller model and I think it will serve me well. Um, I definitely didn't have the money or the time for an 8 inch. Though, not the time, the money or the space for an 8-inch. If you do, I would suggest going with the 8-inch because I think the majority of your boards that you're going to work with are going to fall in that 8-inch range. Anything bigger than 6-inch, I'm going to have to do it the way I did do it, which was basically flatten one side as much as possible with a hand plane and then run it through my lunchbox planer, which is uh, 12 and a half inches. So, let's go ahead and start uh, the assembly of this. Okay, so here we have the box that the joiner came in. Um, so the joiner's in here. I went ahead and I moved my workbench out of the way to kind of create some more floor space for me to assemble this. Plus, I also have the top of the workbench for help, uh, like a little, you know, to stage parts and stuff. Now, you want to go ahead and you want to read your manual completely. You want to go ahead and read it from start to finish so you know the steps that you need to do so you don't make any mistakes that could damage your joiner. Also, you want to do an inventory of all the parts. There's a part list in this manual. You want to do an inventory so you know what you have. And if you're missing something, you need to contact Grizzly immediately and uh, so they can rectify that problem. So that's go ahead, get ready, tool set simple, screwdriver, um, straight edge couple nothing fancy you should all have that in your shop so let's go ahead get started okay so basically here's all the stuff that was on the top layer of a two layer box um, and this pretty much is stuff to assemble the base of the joiner um, we have the lower assembly with the wheels we have the front kick wheel that raises and lowers so you can move it around um, the um, kind of support legs here as well as the panels, top plate, um, dust chute, etc. So um, then the second tier in the box will be things like the top joiner, the fence, um, safety guards, motor, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to start by assembling the box. Now the bolts though are on the bottom section. So I'm going to go ahead and get the bolt bag. So they actually include Allen wrenches and actual adjustment wrenches. You have uh, adjustment hardware, um, uh, a contraption of some sort. I don't know. I think we'll figure that out. Um, but what I want to do is I want to take all these bolts that are here in this bag and I want to find a container. You want something old, an old, I don't know, butter container or something. I just want to put them in. It's easier for me to go ahead and look through those. So we're going to set that up and then we're going to start going through the steps. Okay, I just found a plastic container. You know, nothing biggie. Cut the top off to make it a little smaller. And I went ahead and just stuck those bolts in it. So I grabbed this socket set right here. You don't really need it. They do provide a wrench set with the joiner to assemble. So um, didn't expect that. It's kind of nice. Um, so if you don't have these, you can still put it together. Basically, step one is we'll take these corner pillars, 
right? They mount right there. So basically you'll take this screw up there and screw it in. That's all you really need to do. Tighten that up. Let's go ahead and tighten them, all four of them, down. We can loosen them up for adjustments later. Next we have this assembly, which is the bottom plate. Right? And that's going to go down here in the bottom. Now, it's a little tight and doesn't really fit that well. Now, the reason for that is I have some room to adjust these legs. So, I want to go ahead and get my wrench. Let me move this plate out of the way. And I want to loosen these up. Not by much. Half a turn, one turn, whatever. Enough to make them movable. So I'll do these four. Okay, now that they're loosened, should be able to get this plate in a little easier. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and screw these in. Now each part gets two screws, I mean each corner will get two actually bolt assemblies. Let me show you what that assembly is. So basically this bolt, washer, and a bolt. Okay, so each leg down here will get two of those bolt assemblies. Bolt goes on this side. And then in the back we put a washer. And the nut. In that order. It doesn't work if you don't do it in that order. Go ahead and tighten as much down by hand. Keeps things simple. I'll take the wrench that's provided and put it there. And then I'll use my socket wrench to tighten it. They only give you one 10 millimeter wrench. There we go. So go ahead and that's tightened down. I'll do the other four legs and then we'll go ahead and retighten the bottom legs that we loosened a little bit. So let me go ahead and attach the other four legs. So I want to take these and I went ahead and um, loosened so I could attach this base plate. I want to go ahead and now retighten those up. This plate here, the top plate. Um, and then these bolts, the same bolts, four bolts we did on the bottom, will go in. You can see the bolts here, right? That's the type of bolt. Now you want to make sure that this V, this, this part here, is in the back. That is for the V belt. Also, um, the foot pedal to raise and move this would be on this side. That works best for me. I think you could probably put it on the other side. Um, if you, depending on how your shop set up, go ahead and I'll just tighten those four bolts down. Put it back up on the table here. Now we have the two side panels, right? Basically we have this one with the hole in the center and this one here. The one with the hole in the center is actually for the dust chute and that's going to go on this side over here. If you can see in the top, we have this hole. That's going to be part of the dust chute that goes out the side. So I'm going to set the one with the hole, the square hole, aside. And we're going to go ahead and put this one on. As you put this side panel on, you want to make sure that there are three holes in the center, right? Here, here, and here. And it forms this kind of triangle. But the triangle is pointing 
downwards. Um, this will later hold the little shelf that will hold our push blocks. Take these screws and they, they literally just screw in. There's really nothing to them. Just go ahead and tighten the rest of these on this side. Okay, I got this panel. I went ahead and just spun this around. Uh, the side I put on is over on that side now. And now we're going to put on this side that has the, um, the hole for the dust port. There are two holes at the bottom of this square, right here and here. They head towards the bottom when this goes on. Now also, there are holes that are tapped. And you can see there's kind of a bump here, right, um, where that, where screws will go in. That faces the inside, so you've got a nice smooth side here. Here, and get this nice and ready. Turn it on its side. The hole is down here for the dust collector. And okay, the dust chute slips in, goes on the inside of these flanges, and then those two holes at the bottom of that box are down here. And so basically what's get gets put in those is the nut washer and bolt assembly that we used to put on the bottom. And the bolt side goes from the inside and then the washer and the nut go there. Now the reason for that is that there's less stuff this way on the inside to get, get caught up with chips and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead, you know, I'm going to hand tighten these down and then uh, we'll just go ahead and tighten them up. There's a total of six screws, two here, two on the other side of this, and two down at the bottom. Now it says to go ahead and thread in the leveling feet. Now my leveling feet were already in the base, the bottom base piece in the box, but I am going to move up the hex nuts into position. Now I'll readjust those once I got the whole thing together to make it really nice and level. This is the bottom of the stand. Here is the side without the dust chute up on top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this wheel assembly, right? It's basically the wheel assembly uh, for the mobile base. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. It's kinda of hard to get down into position, but you can get it in on there and I'll knock it over just to kind of line up the screws. Um, and there we go. We'll go ahead and we'll bolt that in. In the directions, it says to go ahead and put this bolt through and then on the top put this uh, lock nut and a, and a washer. Um, this design has changed since the book, which is good. I mean, it, it, the improvements are for the better here. So if something's not really identical with the book, it's because they definitely have made an improvement. And the improvement here is you slide this bolt in from the top and there are actually threads now built into the base. So what we're doing is we're effectively have a, a built-in nut here. And since the bolt comes in from the top and everything, I think it's a much stronger uh, kind of application. Now that that's kind of set like that, we have two more bolts that go in here the long bolt goes in, we'll come out the other side, flat washer. Okay, the bolts are in. We'll stick the wrench on top and tighten them down. Motor assembly, cord goes to power switch, to the plate, to the power cord. So, on the top of this, um, they have it wrapped to keep the key in. And then they provide this pulley in this bag. Um, a lot of this stuff is sprayed down with oil to keep it from rusting. You can wipe off the excess. Um, okay, so what we have to do is mount this pulley onto the shaft. So let's go in close and grab our Allen wrenches. Okay, so slip the pulley on. 
and then I'll put the key in. Now the reason a key is important, well obviously it would spin without it, but on shafts like this, the, the key is usually made of a softer metal. So if something would bind to the point, um, the key would shear apart, saving the motor. And that's kind of the point of that. So we'll go ahead and tighten this all the way down. Okay. Pulley's on there. Now we can go ahead, I'll bring back up the case and we'll mount this in. Okay, these four carriage bolts, washers, and nuts are for the motor. So let's go ahead and mount. So in here, I have the spot for the motor. Now you want to make sure you line the, the pulley slot here with the pulley side. You want to mount the motor in backwards. That won't work very well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the motor. Yes. I'm just loosely mounting these. We're not looking to tight anything down here. Just go ahead and I'll tighten all these down. Okay, so I put the joiner on the floor and I want to go ahead and level it. And as we can see, we're not really level and we are a little high on that side. So. I think we really want to go ahead and, and get this a little better leveled out. doesn't have to be perfect yet, but just a little more stable. So I'm going to tilt this down. And adjust these feet. Okay, so I leveled out the feet. Now, next step is step 13. And you're going to need help with this step. You shouldn't try this alone. The... We're basically going to put the bed assembly of the joiner on top of this stand. It's very heavy. You need two people. Um, my wife is the um, only person here, so she'll be giving me a hand. Now, um, these bolts that were up here and on the bottom, go ahead and, and you need to tighten them down at this point, locking this whole thing pretty firm. So, walk towards me. Pull left your end down. Okay, so we, we got basically the aircraft carrier up there, the, the, the base unit. Now it's covered with a protective oil. Um, the whole purpose of the oil is to keep this from rusting in transport. So it's a good thing that it's there. We need to remove it now. Um, so basically there's some bags, what looks like wax paper of some sorts. I don't know what it is. It's just paper with oil impregnated. All needs to come off. You know there are some messy guy somewhere who has to put all this stuff on on every piece. Um, hat, hat off to whoever that is. Um, okay, so we remove all the paper and we're left with this oily, waxy, greasy kind of stuff. And we need to remove it. Now there's a couple ways we can go ahead and remove it. One, we can remove it with a solvent like kerosene or gasoline or something like that. I recommend not doing that at all. Um, that creates lots of fumes. Um, it's just more dangerous than I think it's worth. I like using citrus-based stuff like Gugon. Um, Grizzly makes their own. You can... Um, 
use that. But first, what we need to do is we need to remove as much as possible of this just by wiping it away with paper towels or whatever. So, as you can see here, it's not going to be an easy task, but there's no really cut dry way of doing it other than just removing it. And the smell of this reminds me a lot of shop class when I was a kid. Uh, I went to Votech for small engine repair and uh, enjoyed it immensely and it reminds me of the smell of the shop. But we'll wipe as much off And then we can spray some of this citrus base stuff. Doesn't smell like gasoline, smells like oranges, which is much nicer. You can let it sit for a little bit, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to show, you know, what it does. But Gets that pretty clean, pretty quick. Really no need for harsh chemicals here. Harsh solvents. Just, uh, that works really well. It's a little greasy because I didn't let it sit too much, but I like letting it sit for five minutes or so, wiping it off. You might have to do it three, two or three times, but it's better than dealing with the gasoline. So, I'm going to go ahead and clean everything else off on this, um, and then when we're done cleaning it off we'll pick back up on the next step okay while I'm at it I did the, the base I'm gonna go ahead and do the fence too while I have all the stuff out to do it um, seems to make sense right so I'm gonna do this in any of these services no different than before I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe away the excess and then come in with the citrus cleaner and uh, go ahead now cut myself on the the blade so be careful when you're you're cleaning around the um, the blades because they're blades and they're sharp <laughs> 